Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I apologize this morning that I'm about 30 minutes late in doing this uh, uh, moment in the morning, this morning, and that's because yesterday we discovered that the catalytic converter on our church bus had been stolen, and so I was busy making the police report and getting the bus to the shop in order to get that fixed. So, sorry this is late today. This week, we are spending a few minutes each day looking at the letters St. Paul wrote while he was in prison, and in particular, at his words of encouragement he offered to his readers and to us. And today, some of those verses could be grouped into a category we might call praise and gratitude. The first passage we'll look at is Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. This is an amazing passage of praise and gratitude in the midst of dire circumstances. There in shackles in a cold, dark prison, it would be easy to lose all hope or to think you have nothing to praise God about or to be thankful for. But while Paul is in prison, his spirit is not. Instead, he focuses on the blessings he has in God. Even in the midst of dark times, Paul looks beyond them to the fact that nothing can separate him from the love of God in Christ Jesus. A few verses later, he gives thanks for the faithful believers in Ephesus, reminding us of how important it is for us to support one another through life. Our second passage is from Philippians 1, verses 3 and 4, and it has a similar theme. Paul writes, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. I think it's amazing how Paul looks beyond his own circumstances in prison to focus on the people at Philippi and expresses his gratitude for them. I also think it's important to note that Paul prays for them, for all of them, and for each of them. So often, when we face troubled times, we can't see beyond ourselves in order to focus on anyone else. But that's not true for Paul. Because he belongs to Christ, he is able to look beyond his own circumstances and to give thanks to God for them, for their support, for them, for their support, and for their faith. In fact, there in prison, as he prays for them, Paul is filled with joy. Our next passage of praise and gratitude comes from Colossians 1, verse 3. St. Paul writes, In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that the theme continues here, but if we were to go beyond this verse, we see that Paul is thanking God for the faith of the Colossians and for the love they share with other Christians. And perhaps that's another way of getting encouragement, to look back on the things that have happened, the things in your life you had part in, and what has come of them. How encouraging and rewarding it must have been for Paul to look at the Colossians and to be able to see their faith continuing and their living out the love of Christ he had taught them. It would tell him his work wasn't in vain. And we can do that same thing in our difficult times too. We can look and consider what God has done with our lives. Our last passage today is from Philemon. And in it, Paul is communicating much the same thing as he did to the Colossians. This time he's writing to an individual and he says, When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. What an encouragement Philemon must have been to Paul who was in prison. And maybe, too, we can draw strength and hope the same way. Many of us have been awed and amazed at what God has done among us in the pandemic. The ways our ministry has not only maintained but grown over the past year has been nothing short of astounding. For example, as you are watching this morning, we have people 
watching with you from Maryland and Texas and Myrtle Beach. And it encourages us that we are connected together and that God is at work among us. In our dark times, perhaps Paul is teaching us that we can look beyond ourselves to see the hand of God at work in us, through us, and for us. As counterintuitive as it may seem, our troubled times are the best times to express our praise and gratitude to God. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was imprisoned by the Nazis in World War II, and while there he wrote, may God in his mercy lead us through these times, but above all, may he lead us to himself. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.